Hey everyone, and welcome into this edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Brady Klain. As you can see, I'm not in our downtown Phoenix studio, but instead in a makeshift studio at my house. While the sports world is essentially at a halt, we still strive to bring you the latest in sports news from around the globe. We now head to, over to Sean Salehi, who is with Canadian Olympic swimmer and Scottsdale resident Taylor Ruck to discuss the latest news on the upcoming Olympics. Happy to be joined right now by Taylor Ruck, a native of Scottsdale, Arizona. She went to Chaparral High School and is on the Olympic National Swimming Team. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Uh, Taylor was able to win two bronze medals in Rio just four years ago in 2016 as a 16-year-old in the 4x100 meter relay and the 4x200 meter relay. Uh, she is currently a student at Stanford, but has taken this year off to train. Um, Taylor, we're just going to get right into it. Today, there was a major uh, announcement in a report by a veteran IOC mem com committee member, Dick Pound, that said a postponement of the 2020 Summer Olympic Games has been decided and that the Games will not likely start until 2021. What are your thoughts on this report? Oh my goodness, I didn't even know that report was today, but um, just hearing it from you, I mean, uh, I feel like it is definitely the right decision considering all that um, this, the coronavirus has put, uh, all the stress that it's put on athletes and people uh, all across the world. I mean, um, it's definitely better to stay healthy and safe and uh, not stress about what we're going through as a community um, and just focus on what we can do to prevent the virus from spreading. And then obviously the Canadian Olympic Committee made a decision just yesterday that they were not going to be sending any athletes to Tokyo if the games were to take place this year. Uh, how did you feel about that decision and do you believe it was the right call? Um, that's a good question. I mean, last night when I read the email, I was, I think I was in disbelief kind of. Um, and then, so it didn't really hit me. And then this morning I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, there's no Olympics this summer. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a weird mindset to try and change because you've worked four years or at least this whole year, um, just grinding every day, trying to do what you can to get ready for the summer. And then it's like, oh, I guess I'll just have to do it for another year, you know, but um, so that's definitely been kind of going through my head today. Yeah, speaking of your training, obviously the coronavirus has limited access that I'm sure you and several other athletes have to facilities and just gyms and other, other places to train uh, across all Olympic sports. How has your training regimen been affected by this outbreak? Um, my training regimen, I mean, yeah, it's been impacted for sure, but um, I'm very fortunate to have access to uh, a pool. I mean, her name is Kim Courtney. She's the lady who first taught me how to swim. So she has a 20 yard, uh, two lane 20 yard pool in her backyard, which is very nice. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so thank God that I can still train, but um, my heart goes out to the people who can't and have to literally stay cooped up in their homes because that's so tough. I mean, mentally, physically. Um, so yeah, they inspire me, honestly, just to like go to the pool and like take advantage of what I have. Well, it's one of the events that takes place obviously between the Olympics is the, uh, Pan Pacific championships back in 2018, you actually had a chance to swim in Tokyo where you won five or five medals, uh, the most by a Canadian swimmer at a single event for the Pan Pacific championships. What was your experience like in Japan? at that time and then how much were you looking forward to going back this summer? Ooh, oh man, that was, it was definitely a really cool meet. I mean, just being in Japan and seeing all the Olympic uh, buildings being put up, it was really cool just to see and it definitely got everybody ramped up. Um, so yeah, the fact that we have to wait another year, I mean, we know they're still gonna be there, so. That's that's a good thing, but um, yeah, it's just the anticipation is going to rise even more, I think. What advice, if any, have you been able to offer, or would offer rather, to any athletes who are struggling right now 
uh, with the thought that potentially they can't go to the Olympics, which is something that they've aspired for? Um, my advice to those athletes that are struggling or maybe struggling or uh, are just at home right now wondering like, how can I do some home workouts, push my body in ways that'll still keep me fit. I mean, don't lose hope. We're all in this together. It's a global thing. So um, just staying connected is probably the number one thing that you should do with all your friends and family. And definitely take this time to just uh, don't, don't stress yourself out unnecessarily, but um, make sure to enjoy the moment because uh, things have definitely slowed down right now. And I mean, there's definitely lots of time to contemplate. So uh, taking time to know what you're grateful for is um, really important in this time. Well, awesome. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much, Taylor, for joining us and good luck to you in 2021 or maybe later this year, whenever it does happen, but good luck to you and stay safe. Thank you. You too. With NFL free agency in full effect, the Cardinals have been one of the busiest teams in the league. And just yesterday, the Cards announced they have re-signed former Chandler High School football standout Brett Hundley to a one-year deal. In addition to Hundley, the Cardinals have also signed Valley native Devon Kennard. We now go to Rob Warner, who has more on Kennard's homecoming. Rob? Devon Kennard, the former Detroit Lions linebacker, has in fact signed a three-year deal and is coming home to Phoenix to play for the Cardinals. It's something that Kennard and his friends used to joke about, but something he couldn't imagine coming true. It's, it's funny. I was talking to some of my buddies I uh, uh, grew up here with and played high school ball with, and uh, we'd always have conversations like how cool it would be if I played for the Cardinals one day and, and all of those things. But it's one of those things you didn't think would actually, you know, happen and what are the chances type of deal. So when it did, um, you know, it was just kind of like, wow. Like, and, you know, it's still kind of like setting on me even now, like thinking about – the fact that I'll be home and family and friends will be able to uh, come to games and just what the day-to-day -day, uh, is going to look like for me. Um, you know, I'm used to being gone majority of the year, so it's, it's uh, going to be cool and I'm looking forward to it. The former Desert Vista Stars deal is reportedly worth up to $20 million with 12 guaranteed. And Kennard said today he can't wait to get his hands on a playbook so we can start learning his new defense. Reporting for Cronkite News, I'm Rob Warner. We now take you to a new series on Cronkite Sports Now called Arizona Sports Rewind, where every day we take you back in time to relive some of the most famous and meaningful moments in Arizona sports history with our Cronkite Sports reporters. We start off by going to Jesse Morrison, who wrote about Kobe Bryant's last game as a Laker in Phoenix. Jesse, what were some of the biggest storylines leading up to this game? Well, it was interesting because, you know, a few months earlier in November of 2015, he had announced that he would be retiring after the end of the season, so it was basically a farewell tour. However, Suns fans had not yet gotten the opportunity to watch him play because, you know, he was 37 years old, and so he wasn't playing every game. He was sitting out some games to rest, and so actually this was the fourth and final meeting between the Suns and the Lakers that year, and he hadn't played in the previous three meetings, so they were kind of unsure if he was going to play or not, um, but he ended up playing and it was kind of just like day of game that they ended up figuring out that he was going to play and the Lakers announced that he was. Now I know in 2010 the Lakers beat the Suns and advanced to the finals. How was Kobe perceived as a person and as a player in Phoenix? Well I mean I mean in Phoenix he was he was pretty hated honestly that that series especially I mean he averaged 34 points a game almost and you know, seven rebounds, eight assists, and, and he just, you know, he was the standout in the, in the series for both teams. And so in Phoenix, just in general, he, he wasn't well perceived. And so in, in that game, um, it, was, it, was, it was interesting to kind of see what I, I talked to some fans and, and, you know, some media members, and, and they said that, you know, prior to the game, there were some mixed reactions. There was even a fan that was there in a shirt um, with the picture of Raja Bell clotheslining Kobe in the 2006 playoffs so there was still some resentment from Suns fans um but you know uh he was they showed a video after the the first quarter a tribute video and and they said that that was most most well received of anything in the night now what were some of the things that Suns either fans or players or even the team as a whole did to honor Kobe on his farewell tour 
Well, they did that. They did that video after the first quarter, but Kobe actually um, was the one that kind of stole the show. Obviously, um, he gave Devin Booker his shoes and signed them, um, and then he gave Devin Booker the program from the game um, that had both him and Booker on it, and signed that as well. And then, uh, and then he just talked to him for like ten minutes after the game, and then went on to the press conference to praise him. And uh, one of the media members that I talked to, Paul Coro, who actually covered the team for the Republic at the time, said that, you know, what really meant a lot to Devin Booker was just the 10 minutes that he spent with him. The, the, the stuff that he gave him, you know, didn't matter as much to Devin. Thanks, Jesse. Well, that's all the time we have here today for Cronkite Sports. Now, be sure to tune in the rest of the week to catch the latest and greatest in sports around the world and also catch up on Arizona Sports Rewind. Have a good day, everybody.